Hello, welcome to another edition of uh, Digital Dialogue by Maritime Gateway. Today we have a guest with us, Mr. Sorensen, Managing Director of APM Terminals Pipawau. Now, as you know, APM Terminals Pipawau is one of the leading gateway port for containers, Roro, liquid bulk, and dry bulk, serving customers in Gujarat with road and rail networks to hinterland and northwest. Mr. Sorensen is an industry expert with immense experience in global logistics industry. A Danish national, Mr. Sorensen has been a part of AP Muller Musk Group since 1987. During his career with Merck's, a range of roles in both shipping and logistics side of business, as well as performing country and area management roles. Over the years, he has held various positions within the group in Merck's line, Merck's Logistics and Damco in countries like Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, and India. His long history of delivering high performance in developing markets of Asia makes him an ideal choice to lead APM terminals Pipawau into the next stage of its development journey. With a vast experience in spearheading operations in APAC nations, Mr. Sorensen has an in-depth knowledge of the supply chain management processes. He holds an MBA from Henley Management College, London, and has attended several executive management courses at IMD Lucerne, Penn State University in the United States of America. During his free time, he enjoys sports such as football and swimming and exploring history while traveling in various countries. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sorensen. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, Ram, and thank you very much for having me, and thank you for that uh, very elaborate introduction. That's correct. So let me begin by asking you, now uh, we have passed about uh, nine months in the pandemic. From the early days of lockdown and uh, congestion at ports, uh, disruption in uh, railroad movements, uh, now slowly things started looking up and uh, exports have begun. Uh, the numbers at some of the ports are also growing. So I would like to understand from you uh, what is happening at uh, APM terminals currently in terms of cargo movement. How things come back to normalcy, and uh, how do you see the business as usual coming back to the terminal? Thank you, Ram. Yeah, first of all, since the lockdown started on the twenty fifth of March, uh, people of our has actually we have been running uninterrupted because we didn't have the same uh, reliability on drivers as other terminals. So we were very much uh, using uh, rail evacuation as well as we have coastal feedering. So uh, we didn't have the same uh, bottleneck and congestion as you've seen in other ports. So we are very proud of that. We've been running uninterrupted. Uh, certainly since June, the volumes have come back uh, and we've had several months now with, uh, I would say record in terms of bulk, specifically fertilizers, doing very well. And what I've said on the container business is that it's a U-shaped recovery that will take uh, a long time. And it started already uh, April, May, June, July. Uh, September was a bad month. But then here, what we have seen is October, November, and we're also expecting December to be stronger, one month stronger than the other. So it's a, it's a long U-shaped recovery that we are seeing. Uh, but uh, I'm optimistic that uh, the volumes are coming back. During pandemic, uh, businesses have impacted badly. Cash flows are uh, an issue and uh, the, the revenues have gone down. But what I see is APM Terminals Pipawa has been taking some aggressive decisions in terms of uh, expansion, in terms of uh, new partnerships, in terms of improving the uh, ease of doing business at the terminal. So let us understand one by one. Uh, you have reduced the terminal handling charges for empty containers by 25%. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very commendable uh, decision. But uh, how does it help yeah. the trade and uh, does it really have an impact on uh, improving the numbers or it is to ease out the burden on the shippers? It is definitely to try to attract some empty containers that we badly need right now and our customers and the shippers badly need them in India for exports. So that's an immediate action we've taken. But if I can take a, a step back, as you said, what we have done during the crisis is we've had some contingency plans and uh, we have executed them quite well. 
So um, we've had a number of skip calls, uh, also because the shipping lines have been reducing their capacity because, of course, the volume was dropping. And in a terminal, it's quite a challenge because we have quite high fixed costs. And you cannot, uh, for the nature of it, you can't do a lot with your fixed costs. But we have been quite good at adjusting our variable costs so that, as you also seen in our numbers, we have been able to keep up the, the, the profit margin. Uh, and that is mostly cost savings. We've had up to 19 skip calls in a month. But if you can similarly reduce your expenses, then we can still keep uh, our activities at an acceptable and profitable level. Coming back then, what we saw is that the demand is coming back. India has been uh, seeing a flux in import. Now, unfortunately, quite a lot of containers are standing full, which have not been cleared yet. And that creates a demand for empty for exports. So what we are simply trying to do uh, with a very quick action is to reduce our cost for discharging empty containers. We're trying to attract shipping lines to maybe come with more empty containers from the Middle East nearby, or maybe in, even if we can induce an extra loader to bring in empty containers so we can cater for the search and exports. So I think we will have a couple of more months of, of, bit of a wobbly market, but it's certainly that the, the recovery is coming and uh, we're trying to do our part and help everybody to come back to normal. Significant thing what I have seen uh, is uh, that uh, APM terminals have tied up with NICDC logistics data services uh, recently and uh, you are introducing uh, integrated uh, container tracking. I understand this, this provides a real-time visibility. So, so how do you want to utilize this uh, technology and uh, what advantage it gives the customer? Uh, I think we can thank the pandemic and COVID for a lot of things. And one of the things that we have seen is that we've been able to run 24-7. Uh, even customs have been able to work from home and run 24-7 uh, online. So the digital and the digitalization in our otherwise very conservative industry is moving faster than ever, Ram. So uh, with this initiative also to do container tracking, it's just another step on the route to um, actually enter into the digitalized world and to take full advantage of all the technologies that are available and which is quite normal to use in other, in other types of business. But our port business and our shipping business is very much still relying on paper and stamps and, and approvals and so on. And we're trying to accelerate into the 21st century and, and take use of all this technology. So it'll allow a, a much more visible supply chain. It'll uh, uh, allow a lot of more information to be real time. And again, this allow our customers to have a, a reliable supply chain because what's also changing is of course, people have not gone to shopping malls and, and to stores, but they have bought a lot of things online nowadays. So this is again, another change that is brought about by COVID. So that brings me to the most important question uh, is the uh, expansion plan. So I've been talking to a lot of uh, 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 ports and terminals and uh, many of them have uh, put their expansion plans on uh, back burner because of the pandemic and then uh, no further investments uh, happening. But I see APM terminals is aggressively outlaid about uh, 700 crores uh, towards expansion. So, uh, what is the game plan now? What is the expansion that you are planning for? And uh, uh, ultimately, what will be APM Terminal's post-expansion? So uh, the blessing in the skies again was that I could spend a, a number of months in the port uh, with uh, nothing much else to do, really, but to work and, and to accelerate the plans that we had made. So in June, we were able to put forward some expansion plans in terms of new cranes to keep up uh, our capabilities so we are on par with other ports in our neighborhood. Uh, that means we plan to upgrade cranes so that we can reach 21 containers across the ship and so that we can accommodate the same type of ships that can come to Navasheva and which can come to Mundra. So that's one part of it. And um, I'm very happy to say that was all approved by the board back in June and our local GPPL board approved that expansion also in August. So this is money that we are ready to spend. It also comes with some upgrades of our yards, which will include our preparations for the dedicated freight corridor with um, electrified trains. Um, and of course, expansion of the yard as we expect the volumes will grow over the next coming years. So we have, as you say, we have now already 
an approval for spending 700 crores on, on those two categories that I just mentioned. And that will just be the beginning. We are looking at establishing a, a row row ferry to Hasira. We are looking at expanding our liquid berths so that we can accommodate very large gas carriers, VLGCs. Um, and there are some expansion plans as well for LPG uh, capabilities in Pipava port. Uh, we are expanding our warehouse to accommodate more fertilizer. So it's really, Ram, it's, it's, it's all around. And what I'm happy to introduce as well is, of course, my, my slogan that it's Gujarat Green Gateway, because a lot of the things we plan to expand in is going to have a very positive environmental footprint. Uh, and that's why we think we're entitled to be called Gujarat Green Gateway. As an example, as I mentioned, we are expanding our warehouse for fertilizer, but we are also putting solar panels on top of the roof just to make sure that we can have sustainable energy source and take take advantage of that big rooftop that we are creating. All uh, we are discussing now with Gujarat Maritime Board is really to how to expand and how to uh, get our concession extended as well so that we can take a long-term horizon on all these capital expenses that we are planning. So do you have any timeline for this? Hoping that we will have something in writing by the end of the year, which uh, positively uh, acknowledge that uh, we're working and we have the formal process going on for the concession extension. And then uh, in conjunction with Gujarat Maritime Board, we think we can have this done maybe by second quarter of 2021. This naturally also means that we plan to build a new master plan for the port in conjunction with Gujarat Maritime Board, because this opens up a lot of more doors. And I think the timing couldn't be better. Uh, we need to see the economy coming back and we need uh, to send some positive signals to the market in India. And uh, for that, we have so many plans that we would like to let, put forward. Uh, which means that you will be uh, ready by the time uh, the dedicated freight corridor is in place. That's correct. And the dedicated freight corridor is really going to be a game changer. Uh, because if you look at um, how much capacity that railways are injecting there, uh, this will be double track, double stack, uh, double speed and double lengths of the trains. And we can even also carry more weight. So um, I, I keep saying this is really a game changer. It'll, it'll be a little bit of what we have seen already because, of course, during pandemic, we haven't had so many passenger trains on the railway network. So we've been able to run trains from Pipavav to Gurgaon, for example, in 48 hours. Uh, but what, what we will be able to do when we get the dedicated freight corridor is that we will have scheduled trains departure and arrival, just like we have uh, ships departing on arrival and schedule in the port. And that really means something for customers to be able to plan their supply chains and, and to um, become much more efficient. I also think there'll be a cost reduction because what it means is that with a 10 times capacity increase on the railway network. I'm pushing the Indian railways and Concor and other operators to also adjust their prices to attract more cargo from the road to rail. And that should help a lot of shippers in India. With all these uh, expansions, uh, with all the new initiatives of uh, using technology, digitalization, uh, making the port green, what is your message to customers? Well, I think uh, let's get through the crisis together and let's be ready for the future. I'm quite sure that India will become more competitive. Um, we will reduce costs. We will increase efficiency, visibility and reliability. And that means that there should be a, a cake here that is growing. So the future is not about stealing market shares from somebody else. But the future is really to grow the business and to take a, a global market share. For India, and uh, I'm very excited about that, as you can hear. Uh, but I'm also quite confident that these plans will uh, will will become true once we get on the other side of this uh, U-shaped uh, recovery from COVID. I think that uh, 2021 will be on the level of 2019, and uh, I also think that 2020 will uh, become uh, a different expression. You know, 2020 means you have perfect eyesight. But uh, maybe that expression is going to change its meaning in the future. But it'll certainly be a milestone of, of change, uh, Ram, where a lot of things will change after 2020. I keep asking this question. What are the lessons that you have learned during this pandemic? And uh, the moment 
the vaccine is administered and it is safe to move around what is the first thing that you would like to do i would like to see my wife she's uh, still in indonesia but uh, after that i think what we have learned is that we can achieve so many things we have for sure embraced this technology we talked about a little bit earlier um we've also gotten confirmed that our plans and especially contingency plans are quite effective we've kept our people safe at the moment uh, out of our more than 1200 colleagues in pipavaf we have 30 people who have recovered from covid we have two in isolation and we have one hospitalized and of course we are praying for those people but i think out of out of our total population we have been able to keep our people safe and uh, that is the foundation to be able to expand and, and and grow our business that we can do that when people feel that they can go to the office they can go to the workplace they can go to the waterfront and they can come home without feeling uh, unsafe and, and and in a good condition that's that, that's that's the most important thing and then secondly and supportingly uh, that we can use that uh, offline uh, that technology the the, the IT and and uh, new inv- inventions and innovations that you have also pointed out that they we can put them to practical use so that uh, we can reduce costs we can be more efficient and that in turn will will generate more business and more volume on that note mr sorensen thank you very much for joining us today and sharing a lot of uh, exciting things about uh, apm terminals uh, i wish you all the best uh, I wish you all the best as well uh, Ram and I hope we can continue and we will have a lot more interesting story to talk about in the future so I I'm looking forward to come back Namaste and if I can say stay safe Thank you very much I wish you the same Thank you Ram